If you're a professional wrestler, if you perform in or around the ring, then you know botching is a real possibility. It just comes with the territory in live performance. But in today's video, I want to talk about how we recover from and how we can prevent those embarrassing botches. It's next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. If you are every bit as passionate about professional wrestling as I am, then you have landed in the right place. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe right now. I want to start by shouting out my newest patrons over on Patreon. Joining me at the apprentice level are Dom the Supa, Marion, Sean and referee Youngblood. And joining me at the Troubadour level is Jack Morse. Welcome aboard, one and all. And it could be you I'm shouting out in a future Till We Make It episode. Here's what you need to do. Follow the link, which is down below in the descriptus. It will take you to my Patreon. And when you join, even at the lowest level of support, which is just $5 a month, I will add you to this awesome roll call of all my amazing patrons. And yes, it could be you being shouted out somewhere down the line. Today, I want to break open pro wrestling botches. This is a real possibility for anyone performing in or around the ring. And I want you to know there are some steps we can take to recover, at least more elegantly than other times, when we botch. And there are ways that you can lower the chances of botching. You can work toward preventing them. Having said as much, when you're performing live in the ring, there is no 100% cure-all which prevents, which completely eliminates the possibility of botching. It cannot be absolutely solved, but I want to load you up with some tips and tricks to help in case it should happen to you. Okay, let's dive into the two halves of this equation. First, let's tackle how to recover. You've just botched something up in the ring, what do you do? Remember these two things. Number one, you are not going to go back and repeat that spot. And number two, grab a hold on your opponent as quickly as possible. And that's if they haven't already grabbed one on you. So do not repeat the spot, grab a hold. Why? What are we accomplishing by doing this? Well, number one, we don't want to go back to the spot that we just botched because we don't know how it read to the audience. Sometimes we make a mistake in the ring and we know it's a mistake, but the audience hasn't clocked that. Now, of course, sometimes they have, but sometimes we imagine the audience knows that we've screwed something up. But if we continued on with confidence and didn't do anything to signal to the audience that we just botched it up, they will not detect it. But if you go back to that spot immediately and repeat it and it ends differently, it tells the audience, oh, that previous attempt, they botched that up and then they just repeated it. You are giving it away to the audience. Do not make this cardinal mistake. So I don't doubt you might have heard that and now you're thinking to yourself, well, okay, Mike, I know what not to do. What should I do? How do I recover? Well, remember step two grab a hold on your opponent. Slide right in there, slap on that arm bar, grab yourself a chin lock, whatever the case might be, and then remember this age-old tenet of wrestling. You are going to think fast, but work slow. Remember, think fast, but work slow. And what you're thinking about is this. If this is a match you've already called in the back, you've constructed it in its entirety, you're gonna figure out how to get to the next thing. You are not going back and repeating the previous spot. Or if this is something that you are calling on the fly in the ring, when you think fast, I need you to start thinking of the next spot. But again, get away from whatever it is that you just did in the ring. So please grab that hold and think fast, but work slow. And granted, your opponent might be coming to you to grab that hold on you because they want to do the exact same thing. And that's the right move. There is one important exception to this that we have to talk about. And that is when 
information is being sent from backstage, likely from the production truck or at Gorilla, to the referee's in-ear monitor, their earpiece. And they may be giving instructions like, tell them that they must do that again. This would be the only time when you will go back and repeat the spot that you just botched. If a mandate comes from production to repeat it, no doubt they are confident they can solve for it in post-production. It will be edited out of the finished product. And in that case, of course, do what you're instructed to do. Work right back to that spot, but orient it the same way in the ring. If you were coming off a certain corner post with that spot, make sure you orient it back to that certain corner post so it matches up neatly when they stitch it all together in post. Now that we've talked about how you're gonna recover from botching, we need to talk about how to prevent this from happening in the first place. But before we do, would you give me just one tap of your finger, please? Give me one second and leave a like a palooza down below. Thank you for doing that. So let's talk about how to prevent botching, but I do wanna remind you, of course, there is no 100% foolproof solution for this, not in live performance. We're always taking a risk anytime we are live on stage in front of the paying customers. But having said as much, there certainly are some things that we can do to minimize the chances of botching in the ring. So, get to training. Get to practice. You need to keep your skills sharp. Just like a knife, which is used time and time and time again, but is never sharpened, over time, it can become dull. Your skills can become dull if you don't keep them sharp. And you know where you're gonna sharpen those? At training, at practice, stay sharp. And something else I think we've gotta talk about when it comes to preventing botches in the ring is this. Whenever possible, rehearse your match. I really believe this about all things in wrestling. Our first draft is rarely, if ever, our best draft. If you are willing to rehearse your match, take out the material which isn't working, and hone the really complex parts as close to perfection as possible, you will almost undoubtedly deliver a superior product to our paying customers. And why wouldn't all of us want to deliver the best show possible to the people who pay us their hard-earned money to watch us wrestle? So whenever you can, practice your match. If you're looking for other ways that you can enhance your matches, I have an entire playlist on that exact topic, and that playlist is appearing on screen right now. Just tap on it, and I will see you over there. There's also a link to my Patreon. Come and be part of our community and start unlocking thousands of exclusive posts all about pro wrestling.